What's up, guys? The Saints versus Texans preseason opener just ended. And I ain't going cap. We just took a fat L to the Houston Texans third or fourth string team. Obviously, I know it's preseason. And a lot of you guys are going to overreact because of the fact that we lost the Texans. It doesn't really matter because most of this game was backups anyway. Most of the important stuff was just the first drive, which went really well. We're going to talk about all that here in a second. But since the ending is kind of fresh in my mind, I'm going to go ahead and address that real quick. Obviously, the backup defense is booty. We saw Daniel Sorensen choke some coverage at the end, which led to the touchdown by I don't even know who it was. But whoever it was, they celebrated like they just won the Super Bowl. Now, I know it's, you know, catch for a guy who doesn't get much playing time. But still, you got no business celebrating like that, buddy. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we just like a fat out of the Texans. That kind of sucks. But um, anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this. Uh. I'm going to go ahead and start with the good stuff because that's what the game began with. Um, Jameis Winston didn't play. Michael Thomas didn't play. Kamara didn't play. Most of your usual, typical Saints starters did not play. Um, Andy Dalton played the first drive, and that was it. But that first drive actually went really well. Uh, we scored a touchdown. It was actually the only touchdown we scored the entire game. It was the opening drive touchdown. I have the stats in the box score pulled up on my laptop right now. Uh, Andy Dalton went 5-for-5 five five for 51 yards. 10.2 yards per attempt, one touchdown, zero picks, and a passer rating of 148.8. Now, obviously, it's a small sample size, but he played really well. And I would say, honestly, he was the MVP of the game. Even though it was only one drive, I mean, he looked really well. And if something does happen to Jameis, I'm pretty confident Andy Dalton can be at least competent. And, um, yeah, the first drive went really well. The defense got a three and out on a few tackles for loss. So that was good. But at, at that after that point, Ian Book went in the game. And look, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room, Ian Book, because I'm sure a lot of the comments are going to be hate on Ian Book. And I'm not going to lie, I don't disagree with it, with the hate on Ian Book. Now, I understand last year, he the only game he played, he was probably in the worst possible situation you could be in, given his role, because it was the COVID game against the Dolphins, with the playoffs on the line. He had no O-line. The only player on the team was Alvin Kamara, and that was it. We didn't have any starting linemen. Um... I mean, yeah, you guys know how it went. He was in the worst situation ever. Now, Andy Dolan got basically the entire preseason game. Usually, you got three or four quarterbacks playing in the game. You got someone getting the first quarter, someone getting the second and third quarter, maybe the fourth quarter, you know, something like that. But besides the first quarter, I mean, the first drive of the game, which was by Andy Dalton, Ian Book had the entire game to prove something. And he, he showed me nothing except that he sucks. He – I was going to about to say something I shouldn't say. I'm not going to say it. But – in conclusion, Ian Book is bad. And if something happens to Jameis, I, like I said, I'm confident in Andy Dalton. But Ian, if Ian Book has to run this offense, now I'm sure Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry and those playmakers can bail him out. But Ian Book sucks. He's bad. He's not good. So he crumbled under pressure. He takes too many sacks. And he just didn't show me anything, really. He had a few good plays where he threw dots against, uh, you know, wide open zone defenses, but nothing he did really impressed me. He fumbled a snap. He had several high throws. And a, a lot of throws, like, a lot of throws when you're watching the game, you felt like you could have made that throw. Now, obviously, we're not NFL quarterbacks. We sit on our ass and watch the game on our couch. So we probably couldn't do that. But. He still sucks. That's, that's, not, that's, that's the point. He sucks. It doesn't matter if we can't do what he does. He's a professional and he sucks, and I saw nothing from him. His stat line was 15 out of 22 for 121 yards, 5.5 average, zero touchdowns, one interception. That was a really high throw. It was against, I, I believe it was the intended receiver was Juwan Johnson, and he was pretty much wide open, but he sailed the ball way over his head, and it got tipped, and it was an interception, and he just didn't look good. I was not impressed by Ian Book. Now, uh, one of the players I said to watch in my previous video on the players to watch this preseason was Abram Smith, the running back. And we didn't really see much of him until the end of the game. I thought I low-key lied to y'all. Uh, but it turns out I didn't because he did get some action. And he was up and down. He had seven carries for 30 yards. His longest run was nine yards. But he had a fumble at the three-yard line. We were about to score a touchdown. And that's kind of what swung the momentum in the Texans' favor, thus them winning the game at the end. But I did like what I saw from Abram Smith. Um... Like I said in my previous video, a spot to watch this preseason is definitely the RB3 spot. And you saw a lot of running backs come in and play. Abram Smith, like I said, Tony Jones Jr. got some action, Devano Zigbo, and Dwayne Washington actually started the game at running back, and he had the only touchdown the Saints had off a screen pass from Andy Dalton, which is very well executed. I thought the starting offensive line played really well. 
and the backups came in and kind of sucked. But the only player I was really watching in terms of backups, like that I was really watching for, was Trevor Penning. And he had some up and downs. He had some ups and downs. There were some plays where I felt like he was doing really good again in run blocking and pass protection. But then he had one play when I believe we were backed up close to our own end zone. And I was screaming at Ian Book to throw the ball because he would. And I was pissed at him for playing like ass. This was like the second quarter or something. And it looked like Trevor, like the play started and Trevor Penning literally shoved the uh, the edge rusher like right into Ian Book. Like just straight up from the minute the snap started, he just shoved him into Ian Book. And then, yeah, it, it's just, now this is what kind of you expect from preseason. I mean, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be very sloppy for the most part, but. Some of it was very sloppy. Uh, None of the receivers really stood out to me. The starting receivers didn't play a whole lot, but in the first drive, they looked really good from the ones that did play. I believe Callaway started the game. Traquan Smith started the game. I like what I saw from Callaway and Traquan. They each had a catch in the opening drive. Chris Olave had a catch only for four yards. I was really hoping he'd get some more action. He played the first couple drives, but he wasn't really involved. His only catch was kind of off of like a rollout, in which the receiver comes from one end of the field to the other off play action, and he was open for four yards. So that was good moment to see him get his first catch but besides that there wasn't much from him I believe that's pretty much everything on the offensive side of the ball no one really stood out the leading receiver was undrafted for agent Dejon Dixon who had three catches for 33 yards he didn't really do anything till the fourth quarter or so but he looked all right Kawan Baker played a little bit wasn't that impressed I mean no one really stood out because Ian Book in his almost entire game of you know playing he only had 121 passing yards so obviously there wasn't a whole lot going there. But the defense, I want to talk about the defense now. I was pretty impressed by them. The Texans did not score uh, like a legit drive in which they went all the way down the field until the very end of the game in which the fourth or fifth string defense, whatever it was, they straight up choked and let whoever the quarterback was, I think it was Jeff Driscoll, just go all the way down the field with whoever those bum receivers were. But besides that, the Texans only had 10 points the entire game and they were all off of turnovers because Ian Book had a pick. And I believe the Texans scored a touchdown off of that. And then Ian Book fumbled a snap. He actually fumbled a couple snaps. I didn't even mention that. Um, he fumbled one snap in which he lost, which was covered by the Texans, and another snap in which I believe he recovered in his own and maybe rushed for like a yard or so. But, uh, yeah, the defense played well. Like I said, the starting defense came out there and forced a three and out. They forced a few three and outs to start the game, actually. And they had three total turnovers. Uh, the linebacker, Chase Hansen, had a pick and returned to like 40 yards. And that was good to see. Uh, I'm going through the box score to see who else got interceptions because I ain't got a lot of y'all. Uh, I kind of forgot. So let's see here. Who else got interceptions? Chase Hansen had one. Brian Allen got one. I believe that was – Uh, I heard that he was from the New Orleans Breakers, the USFL team. I actually don't remember because I did watch a few Breakers games, but I didn't know anybody's name, to be honest, except for, like, the quarterback and, you know, the big players. Yes, you can call me a casual Breakers fan. That's what I am. I didn't really care about that. I'm sorry to those that I offended, but it's facts. And the other player they got to pick was safety Justin Evans, who used to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know some of y'all remember that week one fiasco back in 2018 against the Tampa Bay Bucks, which Ryan Fitzpatrick went God mode against us for no reason. And then we proceeded to win 10 straight games after that. But Justin Evans actually had a fumble return for a touchdown against us. Not that that really means anything, but just something to note. He had a great interception. I believe that was a deep ball, and he just kind of undercut the route or whatever it was. He went over the top and intercepted it. It was a good play. Um, Will Lutz actually kicked in this game. He went one for one on his field goals, and he went one for one at extra points. And some kicker named Romo, I was calling up Tony Romo the whole game because I didn't know what his name was, but he wore number 15, and he made a field goal, so I guess it's good to see. Blake Gillikin punted well. I mean, it's kind of all I have to say. Like I said, it's preseason. If you're going to overreact to this loss, that's okay. But there wasn't, like, I mean, yeah, you can look at the bad. The last drive sucked, but it's preseason. I mean, you might as well get that out of your system now. I mean, I don't mind it. It was Ian Book. You know, it was Jeff Driscoll. It was the third-string defense. It is what it is. I don't know a lot of these guys' names. Once we got to the fourth quarter, I really didn't know a lot of these guys. And I'm a diehard Saints fan. I think I know everyone on the team. But to be honest with you, I really don't, apparently. So, the time of possession was pretty even. Um, both teams had three turnovers. I mean, the difference in the game was really the Abram Smith fumble at the three-yard line and then the Texans' long drive at the end of the game that won it in the last two minutes or so. So that's tough, but the Saints are back at it in Lambeau Field against Green Bay. They're going to have joint practices with them leading up to this game. 
So that'll be fun to see. And um, we're back at it on Friday. So I'll have another post-game recap when that comes out. I might have another video coming out of about uh, recapping the joint practices or something about training camp. Uh, I'll find a way to get some videos going leading up to this Packers game. Gonna, I'm going to have some highlights coming out in the next couple days or so from this preseason game. Maybe the good and bad from Ian Book. And the defense deserves some praise, although they sucked booty at the end and let Jeff Driscoll or whoever the quarterback was go down the field and score in two minutes. But besides that, they forced three turnovers and they played well. So do expect a video, a highlight video rather, about that. But like I said, I'm just kind of rambling right after the game, my initial reactions. That's kind of how these recaps are going to be like most of the season. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, St. Football's back, so that's the best really part about tonight. Football's back, and we're back at it on Friday. So uh, let me know what I missed. If you have any questions or whatever it is, just let me know. If you're new, subscribe because I'm going to have lots of content coming out this season like I, like I mentioned earlier. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.